FS1. Last night, the Brewers lost in extra innings and were heated about Manny Machado's play at first base in the 10th inning, calling it dirty. In fact, Christian Yellis said it was a dirty play by a dirty player. <laughs> Marcellus, do you agree? Yeah, facts. Um, uh, track is my favorite sport, uh, and I do know something about form and your gait, and no one ever drags their left oh foot like that when they're running that fast. And so when you do that and you see that his ankle's on it, come on, man. that's the Get off the bag, that's man. The you already got the out. Get off the bag. That wasn't dirty. Accident on purpose. That's right a little... Here. It's a little sent message, man. Oh, here you go. See, little messages yeah. right there. That's the and problem. You need some of that. You no, need no, no. some of that Accidents in baseball. on purpose. That's what that is. And he, All right. he tried to send a message. Can the Dodgers take a series lead with Clay, uh, Clayton Kershaw on the mound tonight? I want to say yes, but no. Uh, last four outings that Clayton Kershaw has pitched for the Dodgers, three of them have been losses. Uh, Clayton Kershaw certainly postseason ERA doubles from the regular season. Hate to say it. Last time we saw him out there, three innings, six hits. Craig Kershaw in the postseason, not something to believe in. All right, let's move to the NBA. And we're joined now by NBA champion Steven Jackson, who slandered me yesterday on yeah. Twitter. <laughs> for the gonna, culture. We're going to get into that culture. on Instagram. We're going to get into that shortly. But all right, let's move to the NBA where the regular season tipped off last night with a showdown between two of the East's exciting young teams, the Celtics and the Sixers. Boston was clearly the better team, pulling away to win by 18 he was an off night from Kyrie Irving. Afterwards, Charles Barkley actually said the Celtics have more talent than the Warriors, but he still wasn't convinced they could take down the champs. What's to keep Golden State from another title? Let's put it that way, Chuck. Injuries, hurricanes, tornadoes, <laughs> snowstorms, <laughs> man-made, some, some man-made, Chernobyl. Does anybody know what a tornado is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that Auburn. I got that Auburn. 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 My that Auburn. Look, look, I, I, I think I listened to Charles last night, and he taught, He actually went on to say that he thinks Boston's talent is going to be an issue for the Celtics. He thinks that too many minutes to manage for Brad Stevens. I, I disagree. What I saw from Boston last night is a team that I believe, what Charles said, is just as talented in a different way than Boston. And is going to be, a, if Boston makes it to the finals, which I think they will, I think they'll be a real problem for the Golden State Warriors. I think they're going to be a tough out. I think he's right. I think in terms of just talent in the vacuum, they're as, I would say, more talented. They're just redundant and excessive at a time. So when there's only one ball, we always hear that cliche, what comes into play is you can have a lot of talent. There's a minimum threshold. But then after that, is all that necessary? Because if you can't manage the egos, you can't manage the personalities, everyone who's walking in has a chip on their shoulder. Kyrie heard trade talks every day he was out last year. Gordon Hayward's trying to prove I'm back. You got a lot of Jason Tatum's like, I've been working out with Kobe. I am not trying to hear that I get limited time. There's a lot to manage with all that excess talent. And I'm with Barkley. I think they're more talented, but they still come up short. Definitely more talented team. I think this is the only team in the NBA that has 10 guys on the roster that can start on any other team. Mm. They're, they're that deep. And I think what separates them and why we don't have to worry about guys worrying about shots or, or guys worrying about getting their numbers, coach, the coach does a great job of making everybody feel confident and a great job of making everybody feel like they're the number one player. Like even last night, you see Kyrie didn't get going. He didn't get frustrated. He started giving the ball to Jason Tatum and other guys because he understands that he's not going to be the star player every night. And I, you got to credit Brad Stevens for giving all those guys confidence, even the guys that's coming off the bench to play like starters, and that's why they had success last year. Yeah, but the problem is adversity. Uh, it's great when we, uh, we win by 18. Right. Oh, yeah, you made me feel like the man. Oh, we did it all in a winning fashion for a winning, for a winning situation. When we hit that wall, when we lost two or three or something, mm -hmm. then everybody's like, we don't want to hear that I'm the man if I can't go out there and have impact and make this game a success. So what's going to happen when they hit that wall of adversity, which every team faces? Well, I think they went through it last year when guys went down. You know, first game of the season, they went through it. With, with Gordon Hayward going down, they had to figure that out the rest of the season. Then Kyrie go down. But that's they had to figure it out. Because then two of the stars leave. Now you have a void to fill. What if everyone's there? We're already maxed out and we're losing in that capacity. That's not going to happen in the East. You don't think? Brad Stevens is too good. Yep. Boston's too talented. Look, Barkley's narrative that there could be some time management issues, I think is false because I think this group for this year is going to be 1,000% bought in. 
they have a chance to do something very special. I think they're, gonna, they're the one team that's going to take the regular season very seriously. And then when they get into the postseason, it's going to be all about making history and taking down this team that's going for a three-peat. I just don't see the Eagles being a problem. Jason Tatum, uh, Terry Rozier, uh, Jalen Brown, the story's out on them. I, regardless of what their numbers look like, people know these dudes can play. Right. And they will get paid when it's their time to get paid. I just don't see the Eagles being an, an, uh, an adversity issue for the Celtics. I don't either, and they're playing for each other. And, you know, people talk about what well, Jason Taylor feels like it's his team. I can tell you right now, Kyrie and Jason Tatum have a great relationship. Right. He, w- he wouldn't want one- another person to shine more than Jason Tatum. But I honestly think Gordon Hayward's going to be the R man out. Because if you see the first sub that came out of the game was Gordon Hayward. The start of the lineup was Roger at the one, Kyrie at the two, Tatum, Brown, and Hartford. I think they're going to finish a lot of games well, like that. Maybe that's just because it's his first game back and, you know, you're on that pitch count, uh, or something like that. But I would say this. I don't think it's the ego issue, but watch for this. Only Kyrie's been to the finals, so everyone's saying we're going to mail him into the finals, but you only have one guy with experience on that level. That may be the reason they really come mm-hmm. up short. All right, to another team that's had everyone talking this offseason, the Minnesota Timberwolves, who start their season tonight against the Spurs. After some recent uh, dramatics from disgruntled Jimmy Butler, the team's owner, Glenn Taylor, just confirmed he is working on a trade to move Butler and that the All-Star has agreed to play until the deal is done. Last night, T-Wolves legend Kevin Garnett said he feels Butler's pain. Totally understand him. I totally get it. And he's dealing with Glenn, who, who doesn't know about basketball. Glenn, Glenn probably Taylor. Great, yeah, probably well, I a, think he wasn't concerned about the time in the park. I know. You know he's going to make, you know <laughs> make, you know make money, but he don't know anything about basketball. Mm. I kind of agree with Kevin Garnett here. And to the owner's got a naive approach that uh, – Someone that knows the marriage is ending or someone that knows, you know what, I got this new job and I'm just a short-time employee here, that, that's an employee I don't really want to deal with. I know Jimmy Butler's going to play hard and all that, but I don't want to deal with short-time employees. Uh, I know when I've given my two-week notice, it might as well have been a day one notice because <laughs> in the next two weeks, I'm mentally checked out. Yeah, your head's in the parking lot yeah. already, right? You're still at practice. I get it. Um, I think Jimmy Butler, look, there's no I in team, but there is a me. And every time you step into a team concept or a team framework, you always still are thinking about yourself. You think about your contract terms. You think about your opportunity, your touches, whatever it may be. So now he has narrowed his focus to saying, I'm caring about Jimmy Butler, and I'm going to give y'all tough love. And as my coaches always say, tough love, I'm going to keep it 100 with you because either you're going to hate me or it's going to motivate you. Simply put. And I think that he's going to go in there and he doesn't care how they take it because he's not caring how tomorrow looks for these guys. But I think he's still going to do Jimmy Butler to the 100th degree. Well, I talked to him, and it seemed like you talked to him because that's exactly what he said. I'm going out there and play. I'm going to be a professional. I'm going to go out there and try to win games. And if, when I get, if I get traded, then that's what happens. But I'm going to be a professional. And I, I, I like what, what KG said because it's probably not that owner. It's a whole bunch of owners that don't know nothing about basketball. Hell, it's some coaches that play baseball. Now they NBA coaches. So some of the coaches don't know about basketball. <laughs> so you, 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 I understand that totally. But Jimmy, is, he's in a tough situation. But at the end of the day, he just want to win. And I understand that. Okay, totally. you've talked to Jimmy. But how is he going to handle this situation He's already explained to everybody what, that he thinks, you know, Cat needs to grow up, Andrew Wiggins ain't tough. And so when he starts seeing signs of this during games, is he going to check these guys because he's a short-term employee and he's, he did it to them in practice? Mm-hmm. Is he going to check them in the game, on the court? That, to me, where the real problems could creep into this team, that could be an issue. Well, he, he's done that. And even the owner questioned Wiggins before he gave him the contract. He did. The media. We need a we need a meeting. We, we, we need a meeting. We need to know money. you're really with us. So yeah. you can't blame Jimmy if the owners if the owners are doing it. But at the end of the day, he's going to check him because his passion for the game. He's going to when they do something wrong and they're not playing well, he's going to get into it with them. So that's why they need to move him so it won't be an issue. Not everybody can handle getting checked publicly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, right. You can, and again, that's why I think the owners being naive and maybe even. The coach, in terms of you start checking Andrew Wiggins, and let's say he's as soft as everybody says he is. Let's say that he actually did call his brother and say, you know what, 
I ain't got no heart. <laughs> so I better not <laughs> say questions if you want to. Yeah. Remember somebody did that over there? Somebody I know right here. There's an Instagram assassin out there. I mean, there. He is. <laughs> so, but again, you could stunt Wiggins' growth by leaving him here with Jimmy Butler, who may just play too rough. Yeah, but, at the, but just imagine Jimmy at his best and Wiggins at his best with Cat on that team. Mm-hmm. They can make a lot of noise in the West, and I think a lot of people see that. Even, I even think Tibbs see it, but you got, they got to go out there and do it. We can talk about it till we black and blue in the face, but if Wiggins don't get no heart, if he don't go out there and play harder, if he don't reach his potential, which we, which we all know he has, top draft pick, he's su- super athletic, right. has every skill in the book, he just got to get it out of him. If you can't get it out of him, then it's kind of hard to respect him. I respect the owner for saying, hey, I tried. I had a meeting with Wiggins. I tried to get this same conversation going. Now I'm going to let you be my enforcer, Jimmy Butler. Not by design, but that's just the circumstance. So, look, mm-hmm. it's a little Jedi mind trick going on right here. He's like, because I believe every single player that makes it has a dog in them. Now, there are different types of dogs. There's a dog that sits there and barks. And it's not going to bite. There's a dog that's going to lay there and say, do what you want to do. And as soon as you think you got away, oh, I'm in you. Yep. And there's all types. And maybe Jimmy Butler and the way he's going to approach them with the tough love is going to get whatever type of dog that Wiggins has in him is finally going to come out. Maybe it's more bark. Maybe it's a little more bite than we've seen. Any chance, Steve, and we'll end on this. Mm-hmm. Two weeks into this, uh, the Timberwolves are 6-1 and one or something, three weeks into it. And looking, any chance this works out and Jimmy Butler actually stays in Minnesota? That's why I say, tell people all the time, you're one of the smartest people I know. Six and one, they'll think about it. They'll think about making it work because they, they're winning. Well, winning Jimmy. fixes everything. Yes, yeah. winning fixes everything. That's winning the fixes, every, That's winning the fixes everything. everything. Because at the end of the day, he's going to get paid regardless. Yeah. All right, coming up, uh, Stephen will not be complimenting me in the next segment. <laughs> because I'm going to tear into him for what he said about me over Instagram. We'll also mix in some Kevin Durant talk. Stay tuned for all of that. Social stuff. I came prepared. I came prepared. He shouldn't have called me last night. Golden Corral's Beat Lovers Bank.